A model steam engine test plant, part 18, piping the exhaust outlet of the condenser to a specially made adapter which fits in the chimney to support a long pipe almost to the top inside the chimney. I spent far too much time rubbing down pieces of metal before painting, like you see me doing here. The other week when I was in York at the DIY store called B&Q, buying a petrol strimmer to fight the battle against the weeds in my garden, which this year are really excessive, I saw this. It's a detail sander, but it's battery operated. I thought it would be a good idea to buy this for rubbing down pieces of metal, which is what I do frequently. I bought the small battery, not just because it was cheaper, it's just much lighter. And here it is in action. This is far better than using a piece of emery cloth and doing it the hard way. This really does make this job a lot quicker. In no time at all, every part of the copper tank is evenly scratched, which will make a great key for the paint that's about to go on there. The only time I had to go back to the emery cloth was to get to any areas where the sander won't go. I'm sure that this detail sander was well worth buying and will get a lot of use. And in no time at all, here is the tank ready for painting. Before painting though, I'm going to mask off the brass part because I do not want to paint that. It's a very simple job, just using some masking tape. First of all, I run it around the edge like this and then I just build it up until the entire area, including all of the tap, is masked off. Often I run the video at a higher speed when doing menial tasks. I've paused this clip to show you what I'm going to be painting the tank with, self-etch grey primer. Conveniently inside a rattle can, so the first thing to do is to shake it up for about three minutes. By doing this, the agitator ball inside mixes the paint to the right consistency. I'm in the outer part of the workshop and the tank is sat on a plastic box which in turn is sat on a turntable. I'm being very careful not to overpaint this. I don't want any runs or sags. After a nice even coat of self-etching primer, 24 hours later, I spray on the top coat which is satin black from HMG Paints. This video is also running at a high speed and you can see I'm spraying a few light coats and by rotating it, eventually the light coats become just thick enough. The paint will actually dry much duller than this because it's a satin paint. And 24 hours later, it's time to take off the masking tape. And after the masking tape has all gone, as you can see, the tank looks quite good. As I've just mentioned, this is HMG Paints Satin Black, code number C71, and it's really good stuff to use, and it looks great. I used the Union Nut and Cone to mask off the thread on the exhaust inlet. Now I'm fitting a Union Nut and Cone that isn't painted. As this is going to be a test plant, I will probably replace the Union Nut and Cone with an adapter to take a piece of silicone rubber tubing. What I need to do next is make a special adapter that fits inside the chimney with a pipe that runs almost to the top of the chimney. I can now fit this part permanently in place using some Loctite 542. This is always my weapon of choice for preventing water or steam leaks. This short piece of brass tube is temporary. With the tank in the correct position, I just draw around this piece of tube to show me where to drill a hole for an entrance into the base of the chimney. This hole that will be 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter has to be drilled accurately. So I'm using a centre drill first and once that had gone through I used a 5 sixteenths twist drill. Using a standard twist drill copper is not very pleasant to drill. A twist drill with a different angle on the end cuts much better. If I was drilling multiple holes in copper I would use a different set of drills. Luckily this particular drill bit isn't very sharp so it didn't wander about and it didn't grab. Now I need to deburr the hole on the inside and the outside and for this I'm using a flapper wheel fitted to my Proxon motor tool. This makes short work of any burrs. I do the inside first followed by the outside and I'm being very careful to control the flapper wheel so it doesn't mark the rest of the chimney. 
A quick test fit using a piece of 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter brass tube tells me that the hole is OK. I'm aware that I do need to straighten up this double union slightly. This is down to inaccuracies in the threaded holes in the elbows. This is not PM Research's fault, it's my fault because I re-threaded them. It's an easy thing to put right though, I'll do it later. Now I'm going to make the special fitting that allows me to fit the vertical tube into the fitting so that the steam exits the condenser right at the top of the chimney. By doing it this way there is no blast pipe effect. This is not desirable with burners of this type. I part off nearly to the end and snap off the last bit. For the turning operation on this piece of brass I'm going to use the parting tool for all of it. It doesn't stick out very far from the tool post so it's quite rigid and when turning up to a shoulder you get a very square edge. Most carbide tip tools have a slight radius and I don't want this. I need it to be perfectly square so it goes into the hole that I drilled in the chimney earlier. Here I'm turning the piece of hexagon bar longitudinally and I need to turn this down to 5 sixteenths of an inch. Doing a quick test with my micrometer tells me that I need to remove a very small amount more. At the moment the part that's machined to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter needs to be longer but it will be fine for the moment. Here I'm threading it 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch so this part will screw directly into the elbow on the outside of the chimney. It was at this point that I noticed that the pipe was too short so here I'm machining quite a bit more off. I know it sounds stupid but sometimes I forget to drill the hole through the middle of fittings. I centre drill the part then forget to drill the main hole. But not in this case, I centre drilled the hole and then went nearly all the way through with a 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter twist drill. This image shows me that I still need to machine a little bit more off the hexagon part because the 5 sixteenths part that screws into the elbow isn't long enough. Once I'd done that I drilled and threaded a hole in the hexagon quarter by 40 threads per inch and this will accept the long tube that screws into it inside the chimney. Here you can see what the general idea is. It's not important to have this vertical tube in the centre of the chimney. I want as little of this fitting protruding into the chimney space as possible. This was a bit of a mistake. Once I screwed the chimney into the fitting, I left it like this for a while whilst I used the transfer punch to punch the holes into the baseboard to mount the condenser. And that's why when I put it all together at the end, the pipe doesn't look straight but literally all I need to do is just pull the chimney up slightly out of the hole it sits in. Then all will be well. Being very careful not to catch either the brass cap or the paintwork, here I'm using a transfer punch to mark the positions in the baseboard so I can drill some holes and put some bolts in. Here I'm doing just that, the hole diameter is one eighth of an inch it doesn't seem to drill like mahogany normally does. It's actually quite soft, but it will do the job. I don't really know where this baseboard came from. I think a friend of mine gave me it. The baseboard was very badly marked. That's why I rubbed it down and re-varnished it. I used some 4BA bolts and washers to tighten the condenser onto the baseboard. The bolts cut their own thread in the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole in the baseboard itself. And there's not much more to do other than correct the angle of the outlet pipe to the chimney. All I need to do now is pipe both ends of the live steam injector, one to the check valve and one to the steam source on the top of the boiler, and make a steam turret that mounts on the baseboard, complete with a displacement lubricator. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.